Jay Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jay Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janak Vallabha Girivaradhari Chai Gopi Janak Vallabha Girivaradhari Yashoda Nandana Padjana Randana Yashoda Nandana Padjana Randana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Anjaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Bhad Paramahansa, Parudika Charja Ashtotar, the Trishi Mada Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai, Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Parudika Charja Ashtotar, the Trishi Mada, His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai, Ananda Koti Vaishnavinda Ki Jai, Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Kuntaraj Shime Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shiguru and Goranga. Narayan Maskitya, Narang Chai Vinarotamam. Devim Sarasutim Vyasam Tato Jai Madiri Yeah, stand here. You're supposed to stand in front. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Nar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadev, the author, and, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashta Prayesha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki by regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil, and loving devotion to the Supreme Lord, who is glorified in transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Before we begin, can you sit there so I can see at least have someone in front of me? <laughs> it's okay, you're okay.
Don't worry about it. But before you do, please pull the curtains. Okay. On this 27th day of November 2019 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in the fourth canto entitled, The Creation of the Fourth Order. Chapter 20, Lord Vishnu's appearance in the sacrificial arena of Maharaj Prithu. Text number 37. Bhagavan apiraja she so padya yasya cha chutaha Hadan ivamano mushya Swadhamma patiyap, excuse me, Swadhamma patyapadyata Okay. Bhagavan apiraja she So padya yasya cha chutaha Haran Ivamano Mushya Sodhama Pratyapadyata Bhagavan Apiraja She So Padya Yasya Chatrataha Haran Ivamano Mushya Sodhama Pratyapadyata Please chant. Bhagavan api raja she So padhya yasya cha chutaha Haran ivamano mushya So dhamma pratya padhyata Bhagavan api raja she So padhya yasya cha chutaha Haran Ivamano Mushya Sodama Pratyapadyata Bhagavan Api Raja She So Padya Yasya Chachutaha Haran Ivamano Mushya Sodama Pratyapadyata Bhagavan api raja she So padhya yasya cha chutaha Haran ivamano musya So dhamma pratya padhyata You want to try it Chris? Okay, go ahead. Bhagavan api raja she So padya yasya cha chutaha Haran ivamano musya So dhamma pratya padyata Okay, word by word meanings. Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Api, also. Raja vishehi, of the saintly king. Sa upadya yasya. Along with all the priests, Cha, also, Achutaha, the infallible Lord, Haran, captivating, Eva, indeed, Manaha, the mind, Amushya, of him, Swadhama, to his abode, Patyapadyata, returned. Translation. The infallible Supreme Personality of Godhead, having captivated the minds of the king and the priests who were present, returned to his abode in the spiritual sky. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Because the Supreme Personality of Godhead is all spiritual, he can descend from the spiritual sky without changing his body, and thus he is known as Achuta. Now we're going to change the pronunciation of this word because Prabhupada gave it a new meaning. Infallible. He's known as a chuta or infallible. When a living entity falls down to the material world, however, he has to accept a material body. And therefore, in his material embodiment, he cannot be called a chuta. 
Because he falls down from his real engagement in the service of the Lord, the living entity gets a material body to suffer or try to enjoy in the miserable material conditions of life. Therefore, the fallen living entity is called Chuta, whereas the Lord, the Lord is called Achuta. The Lord was attractive for everyone, not only the king, but also the priestly order, who were very much addicted to the performance of Vedic rituals. Because the Lord is all attractive, he is called Krishna, or, quote, one who attracts everyone. The Lord appeared in the sacrificial arena of Maharaj Prithu as Chiradakshai Vishnu, who is a plenary expansion of Lord Krishna. He is the second incarnation from Karanodakshai Vishnu, who is, the origin, who is the origin of material creation and who expands as Garbodakshai Vishnu, who then enters into each and every universe. Chiradakshai Vishnu is one of the Purushas who control the material modes of nature. Om Jnana Timadandasya Jnananjana Shalakya Chakshu Unmiditam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and to all members of Sri, Pura, Sri Parampara, the disciplic succession. So this has been quite an episode. This is Maharaj Prithu, uh, who was uh, pacified, if you will, by Lord Vishnu after the incident of wanting to perform a hundred horse sacrifices. And he got through 99, and Indra became envious. He was afraid that Prithu was going to become more qualified than him and take his post. So what did, what did uh, Indra do, Jamal? But what did he do first? Disguised himself as a sannyasi. And Prabhupada puts great uh, emphasis on this, and so do the commentators, as this is the beginning of the fall down of the sannyas ashram. There's many in modern day in Kali Yuga. Uh, I hear Prabhupada's lectures all the time. He says, yes, and so many of them, they just, uh, they don't actually qualify as sannyasi, but they take the role because it's how much status in society, they exploit that and so forth. We may know instances of that. So uh, Prithu and Prithu's son became very angry at Indra. And uh, they were pacified, I think, first by Lord Brahma, and then Lord Vishnu was preaching to, to, to Prithu, came down and said, look, 99 is fine, you know, be satisfied with that. And by uh, Vishnu's preaching, Prithu became very uh, forgiving of Indra. He even hugged him, gave him a big embrace, and completely forgave him. So this is a, uh, a very nice lesson how one can be revolutionary transformed, his heart can be transformed by the association of Vishnu, by hearing Krishna's words, by associating with devotees. One can expunge uh, the, the effects of the lower modes in one's life. But I wanted to focus here on what Prabhupada, uh, he, he focused first on this word achuta, which uh, Prabhupada gave it this meaning, which, which it means in Sanskrit, cannot fall down. And infallible, infallible in English means something else, but uh, in our vocabulary, maybe it's kind of so influential, we'll give that new meaning in the dictionary one day, uh, cannot fall down. Uh, as opposed to the living entity in the material world who falls down from his position in the spiritual world. So I wanted to uh, uh, read something about that specific subject, which is still boiling around in his gun. How did we get here? I mean, this is a, this is a question that every living entity should ask, where, where did I come from? Uh, who am I? How did I get in this situation? Uh, and especially when we understand that, uh, as Prabhupada said, our real home is in the spiritual world with Krishna. And uh, we fell from there. Well, how did that happen? I mean, isn't it kind of uh, it's puzzling? Because Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, once going there, you never come back. So what's the difference between going there and being there? So uh, there is a difference. It probably described once burned, twice shy. Did you ever hear that little motto in English? Once burned, twice shy. Prabhupada gives that as an example of, of how uh, one can teach one's children. The child is insisting on either it's the fan or the fire. You know? I think actually this happened with Prabhupada and one of his, his, his children. He had, you know, it's got to get so hot in India, they had an electric fan. 
And so his, his little son was wanting to put his finger in it, and he said, no, no, no. And so a friend of his said, well, just pull the plug. And when it's almost down to, you know, harmless speed, let him touch it. And he'll have enough of, enough of a, you know, uh, pain to never do it again. And that's what happened. And that's what, that's what uh, or a child wants to put his hand in the fire. I said, okay, put his hand in the fire. So he puts his hand and immediately pulls it out and then he never puts it again. So similarly, uh, Srila Prabhupada has explained that having been in this material world so long and suffered for millions of births, and gone back to the spiritual world, we'll have enough of a remembrance of that that we'll never be tempted to do it again. But I wanted to read something from uh, first the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and then a letter Prabhupada wrote, which isn't really a letter, it's an attachment to a letter, it's an essay, which thoroughly explains his understanding of how he came to the material world. And the first one is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, so if you'll allow me, uh, this is from the Madhya it's the teachings of Lord Chaitanya to Sanatana Goswami. Now, just the, the context of this verse. Uh, as you may remember, uh, Sanatana Goswami escaped from jail. He was told to go to Vrindavan um, and, and, and write books. But on the way, he, he was able to get out of jail. He was, he was a, uh, an intimate uh, servant of the king, of, of the Nawab, of the Muslim king, he and his brother, Rupa Goswami. And Sanatan was a minister, and, and Rupa was another close associate. So, but when they met Lord Chaitanya, they completely lost their desire to serve in the kingdom. You know, they, they, they wanted to quit. So Rupa was able to get out and went to Vrindavan, but Sanatan was arrested. He was arrested and put in jail. The king needed him so much. And uh, he was able to bribe the, the jailer to let him out. So then he finally makes his way, and he heard that Lord Chaitanya was in Varanasi, so he went there and met him there. And there for two months, I think it was, the Lord Chaitanya instructed him, most extensive of all of his personal instructions. And that is recounted in the uh, 20th chapter of the Madhya Leela, beginning in the 20th chapter. So, uh, you know, Sanatana Goswami takes a very humble position, even though he's extremely learned, he, know, he knew Sanskrit, he knew Arabic, he knew Persian, and uh, he was born in a Saraswat Brahmin family. But he presented himself as completely ignorant, with the traditional straw in the mouth. This is a, a symbol of, of uh, humility and surrender. He says, who am I? Why am I suffering so much? If I don't know this, then what's the use of all my erudition? People call me a learned man, but I don't consider myself such. So he was taking the proper attitude toward his guru, who was Lord Chaitanya himself. So Lord Chaitanya encouraged him, said, I know you're already learned in these things. You're beyond the three modes of nature, but you're asking these. It's proper to ask because then the answers can be heard by everybody. So the first question is, who am I? Who, who are we? If we, can't, if we don't know that, how can we uh, cure our material disease? The first, the first understanding, which is like, duh, you know, we're suffering in this material world. People don't want to even admit that, but that's an obvious thing. So why are we suffering, and who am I, and how can I relieve the suffering? So after some preliminaries, Lord Chaitanya spoke this, this verse, which we should all know, at least the first line. Jivera Swarupoi Krishnera Nityadas, which ans answers the question, who are we eternally? That word Swarup is very important. It comes up again and again. Swarup Shakti, Swarup Siddhi, or this is just the, the Swarup of the Jiva, the actual eternal form that, that uh, these other forms that we have are not really us. These are just temporary coverings on the soul. Well, what's the real form of the soul? So Lord Chaitanya says, the eternal sarup of every jiva, not just humans, every jiva, is to be a servant of Krishna. Jivara swarupoi krishnera nityadas. But he goes on. Jivara tatasta shakti, excuse me, krishnera tatasta shakti, beda beda prakash. Now all of those points pertain to the sarup. We are eternally the, the servant of Krishna. This is our intrinsic nature. We are eternally his tatasta shakti, between the internal energy and the, and the material energy. In other words, we can, we can, we're, we're not free. We're going to be influenced and controlled by one of those energies. Now, due to our ignorance and our foolishness, we've placed ourselves under the control of the material energy, which is a painful situation. But most of the living entities don't make that mistake and they're under the control of the internal energy, meaning that they're surrendered to Krishna, they're engaged in a loving, reciprocal relationship of service with him. 
So now then he goes on to explain uh, uh, the, the, the sufferings of the material world, uh, how the, the, uh, the uh, Lord, Lord Krishna, he, write, he uh, speaks or has his expansion speak and write the Vedic literatures to give us knowledge how we can come out of this. And then uh, after a while he comes to this verse, it's just 117, that was 108. 108 and 109 is in two verses together. And this is the verse where he's describing how the living entity comes here. Krishna buli se jeev anadi bahimuk ataeva maya tare deya sangsar duk. Forgetting Krishna, the living entity has been attracted by the external feature from time immemorial. Therefore, the illusory energy, maya, gives him all kinds of misery in his material existence. Now, in this purport, Prabhupada, he explains uh, in concisely how we came here. When the living entity forgets his constitutional position as an eternal servant of Krishna, he is immediately entrapped by the illusory external energy. The living entity is originally part and parcel of Krishna and is therefore the superior energy of Krishna. He is endowed with inconceivable minute energy that works inconceivably within the body. However, the living entity, forgetting his position, is situated in material energy. The living entity is called the marginal energy because by nature he is spiritual, but by forgetfulness he is situated in the material energy. Thus he has the power to live either in the material energy or in the spiritual energy, and for this reason he's called marginal. Being in the marginal position, he is sometimes attracted by the external illusory energy, and this is the beginning of his material life. When he enters the material energy, he is subjected to the threefold time measurement, past, present, future. Past, present, and future belong only to the material world. They do not exist in the spiritual world. The living entity is eternal, and he existed before the creation of this material world. Unfortunately, he has forgotten his relationship with Krishna. The living entity's forgetfulness is described herein as anadi, which indicates, anadi means beginningless, but this indicates that it has existed since time immemorial, so long back before that it might as well be beginningless, but there was a beginning. One should understand that due to his desire to enjoy himself in competition with Krishna, the living entity comes into material existence. Now, there's another explanation. Krishna, uh, Srila Prabhupada expands on this, and I wanted to share it with you because this is like foundational understanding. This whole this phrase that, I, don't, I think Prabhupada coined this phrase, back home, back to Godhead, which of course he appropriated for his, his Back to Godhead magazine, in a sense says, says it all. Back home. Well, that we must have been there, right? So back home means that we're wandering here as exiles, as strangers in a strange land for millions and millions of births. But everyone wants to go back home to that place where you never have to leave again. You're completely happy and satisfied and peaceful and beyond all danger. And, and an ocean of bliss. So that is the purpose of this movement, to go back home. And how to do it uh, is the process of devotional service. So there's this one more here, if you'll allow me. And that is the famous Crow and Tal letter. It's actually an essay that's attached, that was attached to a letter that he wrote to uh, Marudvi Swami at that time, who was the uh, GBC of Australia. And you have to understand, at that time, nobody in ISKCON was reading any other books besides Prabhupada. So this one devotee in Melbourne, I think it was, who was the president, had done some research, and he picked out this quote, that quote, this quote, because Prabhupada's books are so vast. And he said, well, it seems like we, you know, came from the Brahma Jyoti. We didn't come from the spiritual world. How, uh, you know, he was making this argument. So, uh, Madhubi asked Prabhupada to write something that he could then distribute to all the Australian temples so that it would settle it once and for all. You know, write something clear. So this is what he wrote. So now this is very, very interesting. Now the title of this is Crow and Tall Fruit Logic, which is a great mystery until you hear the end of this letter. <laughs> That's it. Prabhupada writes, We never had any occasion when we were separated from Krishna. Just like one man is dreaming and he forgets himself. In dream, he creates himself in different forms. Now I am the king, discussing like that. This creation of himself is as seer and subject matter or scene, two things. But as soon as the dream is over, the scene disappears. S-E-E-N, disappears. But the seer remains. Now he is in his original position. Our separation from Krishna is like that. We dream this body in so many relationships with other things. First the attachment comes to enjoy sense gratification. Now this is important. 
even with Krishna, desire for sense gratification is there. There is a dormant attitude for forgetting Krishna and creating an atmosphere for enjoying independently. This is the tatasta, this is the marginal position, meaning that we, have, we, 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 we can go either way. And if we allow our mind to contemplate the material energy long enough, we'll develop a desire. That desire is dormant within us. Uh, just like at the edge of the beach, very per pertinent for us, sometimes the water covers, sometimes there is dry sand coming and going. Our position is like that, sometimes covered, sometimes free, just like at the edge of the tide. As soon as we forget, immediately the illusion is there. Just like as soon as we sleep, the dream is there. We can't say, therefore, that we are not with Krishna. As soon as we try to become the Lord, immediately we are covered by maya. Now, this is the, like, the, like, like the money quote, this sentence here. Because if you accept this, then it, 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 everything follows. Formerly, we were with Krishna in his leela or sport. It's not like we were in some vague, you know, Brahman or something and came down here. We were with Krishna in his leela or sport. But this covering of maya may be a very, 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 very long duration. Therefore, many creations are coming and going. Due to this long period of time, it's sometimes uh, said that we are ever conditioned. Now, this is the phrase nitya buddha. Nitya buddha. There, there has to be a reconciliation. You, you, can't, you can't be nitya mukta and have nitya buddha. You know, that, that, then that means that the nitya muktas are always there. They never come here. Then, then how did we get here? And if we're nitya buddha, how can we go back? What's the point of practicing Krishna consciousness? You see, nitya has to be cracked. <laughs> it seems like it's nitya because it's from time immemorial. You see that? So, so that's why Prabhupada, he doesn't use the phrase nitya buddha, but that's what he's talking about. Sometimes, due to the long period, it seems in nitya, of time, it's sometimes said that we are ever conditioned, nitya buddha. But, his, but this, his long duration of time becomes very insignificant this, be this long duration of time becomes very insignificant when one actually comes to Krishna consciousness. Just like in a dream, we are thinking very long time, but as soon as we awaken, we look at our watch and we see it has been only a moment. Just like with Krishna's friends, they were kept asleep for one year by Brahma. You know, all know this best, huh? Brahma Vimohan. He stole the calves and the boys. Yeah. Uh, but when they woke up and Krishna returned before them, they considered that only a moment had passed. So this dreaming condition is called non-liberated life. And this is just like a dream. Although in this material calculation, it is a long, long period. Now here's, listen to this one. As soon as we come to Krishna, return to Krishna, consciousness, then this period is considered as a second. For example, Jai and Vijay. They had their lila with Krishna, but they had to come down for their little mistake. They were given mukti, merging into the Brahma Sayuja after being killed three times as demons. This Brahma Sayuja Mukti is non-permanent. Every living entity wants pleasure, but Brahma Sayuja is minus pleasure. That's merging into the Brahman impersonalism, Nirvishesh. There is eternal existence only. Eternal existence, not eternal bliss and, inter and, and full knowledge. So when they do not find transcendental bliss, they fall down to make a compromise with material bliss. Just like Vivekananda founded so many schools and hospitals. So even Lord Brahma, he is still material and wants to lord it over. He may come down to become a germ, but then he may rise up to Krishna consciousness and go back home, back to Godhead. That is the position. So when I say yes, there is eternal leela with Krishna, that means on the evidence of Jai Vijay. Unless one develops full devotional service to Krishna, he goes up only to Brahma Sayuja but falls down. But after millions and millions of years of keeping oneself away from the leela of the Lord, when one comes to Krishna consciousness, this period becomes insignificant, just like dreaming. So what one has to get his brain, or, you know, wrap your mind around this idea of like practically infinitely malleable time, sense of time. You get some sense of that as you grow older. Gradually time speeds up, you know. If you take yourself back when you were like six years old, it was forever until I got to be seven, you know. I'm not six, I'm six and a quarter. Remember that? Six and a half, I'm older than you. Because the time is going, so it's, it's the percentage of your life that that's is governing how fast time seems to go. So here is like, you know, who can conceive of Brahma's lifetime? 310, excuse me, 311 trillion, 40 billion? It's inconceivable. But uh, that, you know, so many Brahma's lifetimes that we've been away from Krishna in so many creations. But when we finally go back, it'll just seem like a snap. Now that's inconceivable to me anyway. So, 
Because one falls down from Brahma Sayuja, from the Brahman effulgence, he thinks that may be his origin. But he doesn't remember that before that even he was with the Krishna. So the conclusion is that whatever may be our past, let us come to Krishna consciousness and immediately join Krishna. Just like with the diseased man, it's a waste of time to try to find out how he's become diseased. Better to spend time curing the disease. So now comes the crow and tall thing. And this is a encourage from us to not dwell on this issue too much. On the top of the tree, there is a nice tall fruit. Remember the Taliban? Tal is a, it's, a, it's a tasty fruit. A crow went there and, fr and the fruit fell down. Some pundits, big, big learned scholars, <laughs> who were just sitting around doing nothing, uh, they saw this and they discussed. The fruit fell due to the crow agitating the limb. No, said the other. The fruit fell simultaneously with the crow landing and frightened the crow, so he flew away. No, the fruit was ripe and the weight of the crow landing broke it from the branch and so on and so on. What is the use of such discussions? So whether you were in the Br Brahma Siyujo or with Krishna in his Leela, at the moment, at the present moment, you are in neither. So the best policy is to develop your Krishna consciousness and go there, never mind what is your origin. Brahma Siyujo and Krishna Leela, both may be possible. But when you are coming down from Brahma Siyujo or when you are coming down from Krishna Leela, that remains a mystery. But at the present moment, we are in Maya's clutches. So at present, our only hope is to become Krishna conscious and go back home, back to Godhead. The real position is servant of Krishna. And servant of Krishna means in Krishna Leela. Directly or indirectly, always we are serving Krishna's Leela. Even in dream, just like we can't go out of the sun when it is daytime. So where is the chance of going out of Krishna Leela? The cloud may be there. It may become very gray and dim. But still the sunlight is there everywhere during the daytime. Because I'm part, I'm parcel of Krishna, I'm always connected. My finger, even though it may be diseased, remains part and parcel of my body. Therefore we try to treat it, cure it, because it's part and parcel. So Krishna comes himself when we forget him or he sends his representative. So it goes on, but the, you get the, the main idea here. So, the, so formerly we were with Krishna in Lila or sport. That's the, that's the idea. And this uh, Srila Prabhupada is, is, is giving us here is understanding that Krishna, he never falls down. When he comes to uh, this, this plane on the earth, He's not fallen. He stays in his spiritual body. And he remembers all of the, he remembers the time when he spoke it millions and millions of years ago, at the Bhagavad Gita, to the sun god. So we're categorically different from Krishna. But why does Krishna come down? He comes down for us. Right, as he says in Bhagavad Gita very plainly, whenever the Dharma becomes distorted, I come to protect the devotees, reestablish Dharma, eradicate the miscreants, I appear millennium after millennium. So he's reaching out. We need an intervention because we're completely uh, intoxicated with the material energy, with, with the particular body that we happen to inhabit. And even when we come to the human life, we can't see because we're covered over by maya. We can't, we can't see the transcendence. We can't even see ourselves as spirit souls. So we're trapped unless someone comes from outside to, to uh, break, a, break the spell. Prabhupada used the analogy in that, that, that verse, Daivayesha gunamayi mamamaya dorotya. Krishna is saying, this divine energy of mine, composed of the three gunas, the three modes of nature, is impossible to cross behind, to cross over. Dorotya means very, 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 very difficult. But one who surrenders unto me can easily cross beyond it. So Prabhupada explains there that the word guna means rope as well as quality, you know. And we're, if you're bound tightly hand and foot, you're, you're helpless, unless someone who's unbound comes and unties you. So the, the, the first and most important person unbound is Krishna himself. But he also empowers his representatives to give us the knowledge by which we can uh, uh, change our consciousness and come out of this illusory uh, conception, bodily conception. That's the whole idea. But before that happens, there's many, many births, so many realities. It's just like a dream world, you know? Krishna des describes, he compares his body to a coat, right? To a set of clothes. Well, it's, it's more than that. that. You know, the subtle body, we create a whole reality for ourselves and live in it. You try to live in that conception, who I am and so forth. I compare it very much to the video games. That's, a, that's, that's an extreme example of it. It's the same idea, you know? Most people are, 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 are dissatisfied with their humdrum actual reality life, right? So we want distractions. You want something to help you forget that. 
you know, movies, the movies are now going down. The more, the, the, the more uh, em engrossing re uh, uh, illusion is these games where you can actually be an actor or, and pretend to be. But it's obviously all illusory, you know? But you live in that. It becomes the most important thing. If you, you, know, you meet somebody coming out of one of these tournaments, they have tournaments now, his whole head has been in the game and everything. Try to sell him a book, you know? It'd be very hard, probably, if he's still thinking of that game. Well, I lost, you know, I put my bet on the wrong. So many things the mind gets absorbed in. So, that, so, the, so the, the whole point of Krishna consciousness is to control the mind, control the senses, place it on Krishna. And Krishna, from within, he purifies. From within and without. Right? The holy name is, is, is so purifying. Krishna is all attractive. The word here is actually haran. It's based like hari, means captivating. Vishnu was captivating to all the sages and everybody there. So, so we have to place ourselves in a position where we can be captivated by Krishna and, and uh, purified, purified of our material propensities. As long as we're controlled by those lower modes of nature, the very idea of transcendence, the very idea that I'm a servant of God is anathema. Just look at the, at the demons we read about. Hiranyakashipu. The last thing he wanted to hear from his son was that, my, my dear father, of course he didn't call him father, my dear best of the Asuras, you know, everyone is agitated in this world, beginning with you, because you're holding on to the impermanent. What is that? That everyone is disturbed. Uh, some, completely disturbed. Samudvignat diyam, the intelligence. Asadgrahat. Because we're holding on to the, to the, to the impermanent. To our, to our conception of ourselves as the body, the relationship with the body, the sensations that give us some pleasure. That's what we're dreaming about, that's what we're working toward, that's what we're sacrificing our life for. It's all a big misconception, and it's very, very disturbing to the mind. So therefore, what's the solution? He, did, he, really, he really didn't want to hear this. <laughs> Hit bottom of bottom. Give up all this kingdom that you worked so hard to you know, perform thousands of years of austerities to get. You know. Give it all up, it just impedes your devotional life. Hit patma patam, griyam on the kupam. It's like a blind well. And go to Vrindavan and take shelter of Krishna, your arch enemy. Yeah, he's about, about to do that. So Haranyakashipu is, is, is the perfect example of one who's so absorbed in gold and the soft bed and the bed companion. Prabhupada explains that one day. You know, that the whole I idea is just, it, it's like kicking a snake or something. And finally, you know, he couldn't stand it anymore. He wanted to have his henchmen kill Pallad, and then he tried, took up the sword himself. This is how crazy he was. That's, the, that's one of the Jaya Vijayai pair that Prabhupada refers to in this purport, or in this uh, letter. But they became so covered. You know, of course, it's ultimate all Leela. They were cursed, and then they came back eventually. But, the, the, but what's ordinary, you know, just uh, uh, ordinary living entities were conditioned we have the, an element of that also. The element of rebellion. The element of wanting to be Krishna rather than serve Krishna. That's the, the seed, the root of the whole problem. So, so by returning again to Krishna, by associating with devotees, by see, uh, understanding the philosophy, very important, and, es and especially by taking it in the heart and practicing, you know, so that the mind is pulled to Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama. So Krishna can attract us once again, away from Maya. And, we, and by understanding, we can see what a, what a crazy thing we did. It was so foolish to try to enjoy in this world and, and to be kicked constantly. It seemed like the sufferings were way, way you know, on the scale, way worse than the enjoyments. The enjoyments are just a, <laughs> a, you know, an inducement. But the sufferings are enormous. All this birth and death and the different species and, you know, living in this modern world and uh, just the air quality, you know, I mean, it's just one thing after another, you know. But, to, but just to learn, just to know there's a place beyond all of that. That's our natural place where we belong. All of this has been a big mistake. Now let us be serious about it. Um, perfecting the process, putting all of our energy and determination into it so that, we, so that we can break out of it. Or, okay, maybe we won't make it, I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to make it out this lifetime. But still, to make some progress, some serious progress, because Krishna assures us nothing is lost. 
next lifetime you get another uh, chance from where you left off. So whatever time we have left, we don't know how much it is. We should not waste it. Turnam yateta, the famous verse. Loved vasudula mamadam bahusam bhavante. Out of me, after many, many births, you've come to this rare human form of life, manushyam, artadam, which alone can give you the svarta, the goal of the soul, the actual thing that you need. But it's temporary like every other uh, body. So as long as you're still alive, he says, anum, anum mitya yava, death is following you, but if you're still conscious, you've got your senses about you. Turnam yateta, strive without wasting time. For what? Nikshayasa, the ultimate good means to, to leave this body once and for all and to return back home, back to God, to the lotus feet of Krishna. And what's the main, main way to do it? By hearing, hearing and chanting. Pabandi, I gave this, this talk, was it Columbus? In one of the places I was in recently. Pabandi, bhakavata atmanak satam, katam matam shabhanaputesha sambitam, punanti, vishayi vidusha dashayam, vajanti tachadana soro ruhantikam. Let me just read you this beautiful translation, probably. Second Cano, second chapter, last verse. Those who drink through all reception, fully filled with the nectarian message of Lord Krishna, the beloved of the devotees, purify the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment, and thus go back to Godhead, to the lotus feet of Him, the personality of Godhead. Any comments, questions? Prabhu? Oh. Which I'd seen before. Um, the term, the back home, back to God. I've actually seen Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur say, there's a quote where he said that, and uh, he said, the mission of the Gaudiya Mutt, this Gaudiya Mutt, is to go back to Godhead, back to home. Thank you. But also, there's another one where, Pra. I mean, it's Prabhupada, so it's second hand, Prabhupada said that, Prabhupada said, the quote is, my Guru Maharaj used to say, the, uh, my mission in life will be complete if I can send one soul back to Godhead, back to home. So there's another one also. And then there is another thing I just wanted to ask you, uh, just to clarify. Um, Prabhupada was saying in one of those purports that in the spiritual world, even in the spiritual world, there is a propensity to enjoy separately from Krishna. That's, that's in the letter, in the Kronthal. The Kronthal letter. Yeah. Okay, but that means enjoy separately from Krishna, not in the spiritual world, in the material world. Yeah, you can't enjoy separately in the spiritual. That that, in other words, that's why we're marginal, mm. because that's dormant, and as long as it stays dormant, then we stay in the spiritual world. Mm. But somehow or other, we and millions of us like like us, uh, try to act on that mm. and enjoy separately. You can see why. You know, I mean, Krishna is beyond he's tolerate. But it, it disturbs the other devotees. Yeah. You know, just like in his temple, if someone is getting doing nonsense, you know, well, you can't stay because it disturbs the whole atmosphere. So immediately you get your own place. It's a corner of the spiritual world that's covered by the Mahatattva, the whole thing, you know. He mentions Sri Daksha Vishnu here. But it's a it's an arrangement where I always compare it to like this tough love. You know, a tough love. <laughs> the father puts a, puts the, the incorrigible son Usually it's a son, maybe it's a daughter sometimes. Uh, under the care of, of a, a strict disciplinarian to try to straighten them out. You know? And that's what this material world is. It, you know? and, but we, but, but it's so, it's the, the illusion is so deep that without the, the knowledge you know, that's preserved in the books and the great souls and, you know, and can give it, give it to us, we have no hope. In other words, we'll, we'll, we'll just, you know, try for a different variety of the dream, you know, which everyone else is, rather than the idea of, let's end the dream completely and wake up. You know, the idea that there's an entire different reality than this, that's, that's, that we can't perceive because it's so subtle and it's spiritual, that is, is not something that you can intuitively understand. You can, you can suspect, you know, you can strive for it, you can speculate about it, but there's no real information and you can't reach it unless you get a definite, uh, you know, as it is, instruction. The, 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 the spiritual world, the Supreme Personality of God, it, and the means to get there. That means, no one is going to speculate and come up with this Hare Krishna mantra. 
<laughs> it's coming straight, it's imported from the spiritual world. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Thank you. I had another one question. More. Um, so in the Rasa Leela pastime where Krishna disappears, the gopis, they all start searching after him and then they go mad and they start impersonating <laughs> Krishna. So I was thinking, what's the difference between their impersonating Krishna and our impersonating Krishna? What's the... Uh, th we're not trying to impersonate Krishna. We're trying to enjoy like Krishna. Mm. They're so absorbed in thinking of him that they're uh, enacting his, his leela, you know, doing little... To be, be, to be more absorbed. It's just like a play, you know? In other words, uh, but, but in this case, they're, they're actually, uh, can, you know, so mad. It's like they're, they're mad in separation. And part of that madness is that they, they, they want to see Krishna so much that they imitate him and they, and they all get into it so that they can remember his, his separate passings. It's, it's somewhat of a relief for the, for the separation. It's a, it's a different species. They're not trying to enjoy like Krishna. They're trying to become absorbed in thought of Krishna. And, and that's what they're doing. It's a different phenomenon. Go ahead. Take the mic. Sure. Um, I guess this is just something that sparked a curiosity um, discussing the nature of the jiva uh, the dormant. You mentioned this dormant desire that every jiva has mm -hmm. um, to want to enjoy to really from Krishna. Um, but we okay, so I think it would be maybe it's not, but I think it would be maybe safe if you hold it closer, it won't buzz so much. Try assume. Yeah. I feel like it would be. Is it safe to assume that Mother Yashoda, who is also a jiva, she could never fall down, right? Well, Mother Yashoda is not a jiva. These, these, all of these intimate associates, they're part of the internal energy. Like Radharani is not a jiva either. She Ladini Shakti, and these, like all the gopis, they expand from Radharani. But there are, you know, it's complicated, but certain gopis join in, you know, the rasa dance here, and they're being promoted. They're being promoted from various places, so there's, there's a mix of jivas and that, but Madhya Shoda is not, definitely not a jiva. So she, no, she can't, but certainly she can't fall down, absolutely. But others on that, you know, who are, are on motherly platform, who are not internal energy, they're possible that they could. I'm not sure what you're getting at, Prabhu. Yeah, and you know, I can't ha hardly hear you. If you're not going to use the mic, then just yeah, the mic is problematic. So. Um well, you said that they're part of the internal potency. So that means that there are personalities that can fall down and that can't fall down. But I thought that was part of the issue with um, discussing the fall of the jiva. I thought that... Um, uh, well, I don't know what I thought. Maybe we can discuss anyway, it after. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's puzzling. Because yeah. where is the love if they can't fall down? But those particular, you know, there, there's no question of even thinking about Radharani coming to this material world. Yeah. <coughs> All right. You better, oh, you have a question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You need to speak in the mic. There's more than a few. There's a lot of all these expansions of the internal energy. Go ahead. So I, I just had a realization. Okay. Um, but I was thinking, you, you said that uh, we were never not with Krishna. We were always with Krishna. And I wish we I said it. <laughs> Prabhupada said it. I just read it. But go ahead. <laughs> and that we were performing devotional service at home and uh, the relationship with Krishna. So in, in one sense, I was thinking that if we chose to, love, to leave, then we kind of hated. I don't want to say hate, but not um, didn't want to do devotional service. Well, that's, that's, that's <laughs> exactly what Prophet says. He quotes this verse that's just coming up in our evening class. We'll probably read it tonight or tomorrow. 
or uh, <coughs> probably read it tonight because it's it's either the next verse or the two verses. We usually do a few verses. Itcha dvesha samutena dvandra mohena bharata savabhutani sammoham sarge yanti parantapa. Now Prabhupada, and we're following Prabhupada, is this guy. He took this verse as proof of the fall of the jiva. Itcha dvesha samutena. Uh, Samutena means to arise. Now what ar arise from itcha means a desire and dvesha means hate. Desire and hatred or, you know. Uh, dvandva moha, the, 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 the delusion of duality, the delusion of duality uh, ari uh, arose from our uh, desire to enjoy separately from Krishna and our hatred of serving him. Itcha, dvesha, samutena, dvandva moha in Bharata. Savabhutani Samoham, all the living entities here uh, have been completely bewildered by this phenomenon. And Sarge, they've come into the existence, they've come into the uh, creation. It actually, the spiritual world is not a creation, it always is. They've come into the created world, this material world, due to that phenomenon. Yanti Parantaba, he's is exactly probably explained it. So that's, that, I mean, you can use those words, it probably uses them. We hated the idea of serving Krishna, and we loved the idea of in, in, in sense of gratification, and that immediately produces this bewildering, you know, Maya is right there, covers us, makes us forget Krishna, and we, we, we now s seem to be separated. So we've lost our standing there in the spiritual world, and we lost our safety. And so we're placed in this material world, and off, you know, it starts the whole process. So the... Uh, the the solution is to get three, free of this delusion of duality, and that's the next verse. One has to become sinless, end all the sin, and simply perform pious activities, which in this context means activities of devotion. They're freed from the delusion of duality, uh, and they they serve and they practice devotional service with determination and go back to God. It's uh, right near the end of the seventh chapter, I'll point it out. So that was an interesting realization and intuition. <laughs>